welcome back welcome back this is still why in the morning and i i uh, you know i appreciate you that you've chosen to stick with us if you're just joining you're still in time for the first conversation of the day we are talking on today's health segment we're talking more on environment and our environment we're talking about the african uh, climate crisis that we're experiencing we want to understand climate change what is it that people are talking about if you've had cop 28 and you really don't understand what uh, is a big fuss about you know climate and all that that's what we're here to talk about today and we are joined by experts in this on my right immediate right i have mudoni uh, trufena who's the founder of mazingira saturday saturday's nation and just next to her, we have Felix Karioki, who's a program leader, Rota Rotary International Corp 28. All right, I hope I've introduced you right. Let me get to you just so, so to confirm. Yeah, um, I'm the founder of Mazingira Saturdays Foundation, mm -hmm. and I work with kids on Saturdays. Okay. Yes. You so work with kids yeah. on Saturdays? Yes. Uh, in regards to environment? Yeah, in regards to environment, we have a repairing park in Gadoraini, uh, uh, along Thicker Road, where mm -hmm. kids come on Saturday to learn about environment and uh, the kind of solution that they can provide. And uh, also we do a lot of activities together, mostly they are art-based, so that we can engage everyone and we make it exciting and easy and simple for them to learn. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I love that kids are also being engaged, you know, with helping the environment. To you, Felix? Uh, yes, my name is Felix Kimani Karyuki. I'm ESRAG Africa Chapter Chair that is Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group. I'm also a member of Lavington Eco Rotary Club, which is the first eco-based Rotary Club in Africa. And uh, it's been a joy uh, pretty much working in that group and with that agenda, the uh, reason I say so, it's because mm -hmm. the environment is where we live. The climate is, uh, is something that we need to be in order at the moment because it's a big crisis. And so working with Lavington Eco, we've been able to do a lot. Uh, Trufena can testify to the same. Uh, she's mm -hmm. a Rotaract. Um, what happens is Rotary has different levels. There is now the Rotary, then we have the Rotaract, that is basically students who are in, uh, I'd say, college or just finished college. Um, and also we have now the Interact, that is uh, members who are in high school. So her, we met when she was a Rotaract. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to work as Lovington Eco Rotary Club and also the baby, which is the Eco Warriors, of which she's a member of. Okay. And uh, there's much I can say about it, but it's up to you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we go, maybe we'll get back to that later on, but let's now talk about the African Climate Summit. Uh, not, not really the African Climate Summit, but the African Climate uh, Crisis that, uh, that is there. So why do we need to have uh, the talks on African climate uh, crisis? What's happening to the climate for people that really don't understand uh, about it, let me start with you. Yeah, so for people, actually, um, we need to introduce art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because art has the ability to tap to the depth of the emotions of people and spark conversations. And also, we art artists are able to break down scientific data that, in a way that it can be, it can be perceived by the common public. Okay. So the first uh, one of the things we need to do is to look at the way we can be able to bring the common public to understand th what the climate crisis is all about so that we can be able to spark innovative solutions and inspire actions from everyone. Okay, so, so art is part of one of the solutions, yeah. uh, you know, of just communicating and breaking down yeah. the scientific jargons. To you, Felix, what yes. is the climate crisis all about before we get to the solutions? Okay, um, right now uh, we are trying as much as possible for the warming not to go beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. um, right now, looking at the temperatures we are living in, uh, we are pretty much above that. Um, it's, still hum it's still habitable, the world still is, mm -hmm. but you're seeing the catastrophe that's resulting from it. We are having the meltdown uh, at the Arctic, mm -hmm. we are having the flooding taking place, um, we are having extreme droughts, like five seasons, uh, this happened, uh, and we saw what happened in Somalia, Ethiopia, northern part of Kenya, yeah. Algeria, Tunisia, they had mm -hmm. wildfires. We saw the tsunamis that affected down south, uh, we're talking of Malawi, Mozambique. Um, all this is because of the temperature increase. So right now what we're trying to do is to make sure that we 
ensure that the temperature does not go beyond 1.5 degrees mm -hmm. extra. Because we are measuring ourselves from industrial age, pre-industrial age. That's how you're measuring ourselves. So mm -hmm. the increase has been um, going on, going on. Uh, I know the, the, the highest that was, it was around the, the year 2016 when it really went high and then kind of spiked. Now it's been rising again. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paris Agreement was all about that, to ensure that the temperatures don't go beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius. Um, the coming summit, COP28, it's more like they're taking stock. What has happened? Um, are we achieving anything? Uh, as, are there any remarkable changes mm -hmm. since the last time we met? Mm -hmm. um, COP, the Conference of Parties, began the year 1995. So that's how you come to 28 right now. And um, th it's been like um, since 2021, there was an aspect of uh, every single country has to be able to commit to how much uh, carbon dioxide they will allow to be emitted in mm. their own country. So that's when we talk about carbon emission, that's what yes. we're talking about. Exactly. Mm. And that's what's causing the, um, the temperature increase because mm. we have too much of it in the air. Uh, industries uh, do cost that, deforestation does cost that, mm. uh, fossil fuels, cost which is that. a big conversation right now. Mm -hmm. As to why we are having COP28 in a country that's the biggest producer of fossil fuel. Yeah. So that's controversial still. Exactly. Uh, so it's an issue of um, what, which way to go now. Because it seems like the temperatures are not really going down. They're actually going up. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, we were looking at at least 30% reduction. Mm -hmm. But now we are looking at 43% reduction, which means we are not making any improvements. Exactly. So where are we lagging? That's the question. The fashion industry does contribute to the same. I mm -hmm. think it's number four. If I'm not wrong, the fashion industry itself. Because uh, what you, for example, a trouser can be able, let's look at a trouser, jeans trouser, production of it, no. end to end. You're mm -hmm. looking at at least 150, um, 150 carbon, I mean CO2, mega, you know, metric tons. It pr just one, one trouser. How, how does one trouser produce because uh, uh, what you're looking at is the whole entire process from production mm. to until the garment has been the made. End, okay. How much has been produced mm -hmm. in terms of CO2. Mm -hmm. And then we look at agriculture. Agriculture, remember agriculture is our mainstay. And agriculture produces about 20% of CO2. And then the worst is livestock. Livestock produces 14% of that. So implication is um, there's a push towards people eating less meat. There's a push towards people not focusing so much on livestock, mm -hmm. which is still, uh, according to some cultures, that is unacceptable. Yeah. And it <laughs> won't happen. Especially <laughs> in the African culture. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if you look at a country like Denmark, I think it was increased their tax on meat so as okay. to discourage people from consuming meat. Mm. So what is being pushed for is what they call the plant-based diet. Because they say once we adopt the plant-based diet, then we decrease the amount of methane, the amount of gas, CO2 that's going into the air. Right. So eventually, that's the whole agenda, just to make sure that CO2 is not in the air. Mm. Right now, we have an overload, I think, of a, a thousand gigatons of CO2. That is just the overload. That's not even the continual emissions that are taking mm. place. So implication is, instead of reducing, we're actually adding. Increasing. Exactly. Okay. So it's an issue of what steps do we need to take? Mm. to ensure that we are decreasing in terms, you know, producing, and also how are we able to decrease what's already an overload in mm -hmm. the air. So that's what the conversation Basically is all about. Yes. Wow, and I love how you've summarized this in a very simple way. It's the CO2, the excess CO2 that's in the air that we're trying to reduce. And it's, you know, I'm actually, uh, it's very interesting that even agriculture, something that, you know, you wouldn't think uh, adds to the CO2 in the air promoting uh, the climate change that we're seeing is actually uh, a part of it. There's agriculture, there's fashion, you dress, yeah. but you don't really know what, exactly. wh what it costs, exactly. you know, the mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to it. Yes. So um, back to you. What do you think? Um, what do you think? Okay, before we went, go to what, what we think should be done, but how from the conversations that have been going on since 19 you've said uh, cop it started 1995 yes. so what is not going right if over the years for all those years there have been talks there's been meetings and you know it's still increasing nothing good ha is happening so far or nothing substantial has happened so what is not going right i think it goes down to representation matters mm -hmm. in the policy making processes 
you know, no matter how much you go to the street and you know activists, they, they go to the street, you give your views on the street, the, poli um, the decisions are made in the policy tables and programs. Mm. So that goes to representation matters and also uh, the, the energy on the implementation of the policies that are made in the COPs. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, ha okay. What about you, Felix? Uh, what has got, uh, th there have been quite some steps towards ensuring that uh, we are achieving what we need to achieve. Mm -hmm. Uh, but remember, different countries have different uh, mainstays, or rather, what contributes to their GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, some countries depend ex almost 90% on coal. At least us as a country, we are, I think, 90% renewable energy. Uh, others, uh, they depend so much on fuel, you know, fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. So um, getting ourselves onto the same table to agree uh, who, or rather, what percentage uh, should uh, you as a country commit yourself to mm -hmm. decreasing so we achieve our agenda. Mm -hmm. um, generally capitalistic world we live in whereby we want to make as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, all these are just distractors but there have been some achievements here and there. I mean look right now we have electric vehicles on the road right? Yeah yeah. We have electric bikes on the road right? Mm -hmm. So you see those, those are trends towards that agenda. We, we are, in fact, there was a time whereby if your house produces 100 liters of, wa or rather consumes 100 liters of water, you're supposed to put some solar panels. Okay. That is a mandate. Up to now, I don't know if it's enforced, but it's a mm -hmm. mandate. It's, 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 a, it's a law, actually. Okay. So, so my point is, there have been steps towards that. But it's, it's an issue of we are mm -hmm. not doing m as, as much as we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you see that the achievement is not as much as it needs to be. Take agriculture, for example. Um, remember, it's our mainstay, right? Yeah. Um, and how our farmers farm is traditional. Uh, implication is you find most of the farmers, because you're looking at 90-something percent of small-scale to medium-scale farmers, they've never tested their soil. Mm. Implication is they depend so much on fertilizer. You see, um, a long time ago, uh, fertilizer never used to be in the scene. Yeah. Uh, but after World War II, there was something called industrialized farming, which happened in the West. And this destroyed their soil. We took it up as something that we should also adapt. Unfortunately, it's also destroying our soil. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, uh, what's happening is that's why now you have things like soil erosion. Mm -hmm. That's why you have things like flooding. Uh, a healthy soil can never be carried away by water. Mm -hmm. What's carried away by water is the dust. And dust comes when there is... Um, it's a long story. What we need, for example, maybe if I break it down to you, you might understand a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, we need as much carbon as possible in the soil. Okay. As much as possible in the soil. Carbon in the soil. Uh -huh. Yes, as much as possible. I think it can absorb up to 4,000 gigatons. There's no question about it. We need it as much as possible. And that's why things like fossil fuel is a big debate because the more you mine, the more you dig, the more you release what carbon is there back to the air. So we need all the carbon in the soil. Now, the form of farming that we do, which is uh, tillage, it releases the carbon out of the soil back into the air. Okay. When you're using your tractors, when you're using your jembes, mm -hmm. you're actually destroying a whole framework in the soil mm -hmm. and taking the carbon back into the air. So the kind of farming, as I was trying to point out too, is that it's still traditional, whereby we still... Um, practice what's causing the damage in mm. the air. That is releasing carbon. The kind of farming that is supposed to be practiced is no tillage. No tillage is whereby what you, you don't dig, uh, but you kind of create furrows. Because what we need on the soil is as much biomass as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's when, I remember you were taught, in, I don't know if you did agriculture, but back in my day we did agriculture, and there was something called mulching. There was something called cover crops. Now, um, we've been having a lot of monocrops, mm -hmm. whereby just one kind of crop. And what's happening is with one monocrop, uh, retaining the moisture on the soil is close to impossible. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need in such a way that um, you're able to retain the carbon also in the soil. Um, the trees, they take in the carbon, they give us the oxygen. Now, the carbon the trees take, they take it down to the roots, okay. down to the soil. When it gets to the soil, it creates a gel called gelatin. 
Now this gel is what enables the soil, working with the fungi, to create the kind of nutrients that the plant needs. When this framework, when you dig, you cut down this framework, what happens on releasing the carbon the back carbon. to the air? Mm -hmm. Now you see what? Okay. Now you see the whole chemistry, biology mm -hmm. behind it? Yeah. There's much to farming than just digging. Okay. There's a whole <laughs> science behind so it. There's also <laughs> a way of digging that's, uh, exactly. that's going to help the environment. Exactly. Like mulching, mm -hmm. you're, you're saying mm -hmm. doing cover crops. Cover crops, yeah. Uh, okay. Rotational so grazing. All right. Because what happens is when you do rotational, mm -hmm. uh, the, the livestock, they leave their droppings, right? Mm -hmm. And this is needed in the soil. A healthy soil, just a tablespoonful of a healthy soil, has much more biodiversity than the population in the world. Just mm. a tablespoon. Okay. Just a tablespoon. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. So what happens is we are lacking that biodiversity in the soil at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the problem is we only have approximately one extension officer to 5,000 farmers. Now, many farmers have never seen an extension officer. And remember, they're traditional. And you're looking at an age group of 65 plus. Mm -hmm. So guess what happens? They'll still practice the old way. Yeah. Our soil, about 37% of it is degraded. On the continent, about 46% of it is degraded. We're not the only ones. In the US, over 40% of their soil is still degraded. They approximate by the year 2050. If we still continue farming the way we continue, the way we are farming now, we're going to be looking at 90% of the soil degraded. Being degraded. Which means what? Now, the danger is this, the risk is this. They're projecting the population to increase by 60% by that same year, mm -hmm. by that same period. And if our soil is degraded, which means less yield, less quality of food, and the population is increasing, and right now we still have 256 million people on the continent of Africa that are sleeping hungry, then we are looking at a crisis. Yeah. So the whole climate crisis is, is, is I, its reality. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now we, we, we're going to face the problem of starvation. Exactly. And what people are actually experiencing even yes. now. Yes. But it's going to be even worse, worse. than it is. Exactly. So to you, uh, Mudoni, what do you think should be done? What is it? What are some of the mitigation measures? Actually, my host was asking for, for Kenya. Is it, um, he was comparing mitigation, is it, are we mitigating or are we adapting? You know, what's the difference between the two? We, in Africa, we, mm. m we are more adapting because we least contribute to the crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we are, the, we bear the brand, yeah, we know, the, yeah, of, we, of what of the, 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 the crisis developed crisis. countries yeah. mm -hmm. have done. So. Mm -hmm. Ours more is on adapting. Yes. And uh, the president, uh, mm -hmm. I think during the climate so summit, yes. um, said that, declared that climate ad adaptation as a key priority for delivering mm -hmm. Africa's march to sustainable economic transformation yes. and green growth. Yes. So what are, some of the, what are some of the things that we need to do to, to get to this? Yeah, we just need to like, find, uh, in, uh, initiate, Mm -hmm. Yeah, like create initiatives yeah. that will lead to adaptation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in our local, like uh, locally led uh, locally actions. Mm -hmm. Yes, like what you do. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, like what you do in uh, your in initiative. Yeah, Mas we most yeah we most focus on beating plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we focus on sustainable fashion. Like what I like this is for sustainable fashion because okay, tell this us about it. Yeah, <laughs> my hair, my hair is plastic free. And it's reusable. So this is the second year I'm using the same hair. I okay. just wash and wear. So mine is also uh, sustainable <laughs> because it's dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, I'm, I'm staying with it longer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah, because the other human hairs are plastic and they cannot be reused because they're unhygienic. Aha. Uh -huh. So it co it's contributing to the crisis. Okay. So we just find our own small ways to reduce the crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am also a fashion artist. So I use plastic milk bags to create fashion wares. Yeah, so that's a, some of the things that we can do in our small ways. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do big things. So even in our small capacities, mm. just you as a youth, uh, doing what you can within yourself, within your yeah. capacity to mm -hmm. just save the environment is a big plus to what, the, what we're doing, the bigger picture, it contributes to it, right? Sure. Mm. Okay. Uh, Felix, you want to pick from that? Uh, she mentioned plastic. Uh, mm. It's the big talk right now. Uh, I know there's an organization like Timau Group uh, that they take plastic and they build um, a house structure out of it mm -hmm. that is durable. Um, there are many organizations that are doing adaptive methods because 
as, as, as you mentioned, uh, as she said, Africa, we are looking at 4% in terms of contribution to greenhouse gas, mm -hmm. 4%. So we are not the majority in terms of causing all these problems we are kind of living with, mm -hmm. uh, from climate change, flooding and all that. Um, Deforestation, that is us. There's no question about it. <laughs> but <laughs> we cannot put that on, on anybody else. Yeah. But you have to come up with a system that takes care of that. Mm -hmm. Reforestation, you know, like the 15 billion you know, trees we are supposed to plant. Yeah. Um, and Rotary has been planting for years and years. She was a Girl Scout. They've been planting for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are just identifiable measures, you know, for us to be able to kind of mitigate also. Okay. Uh, but adoption is pretty much uh, what uh, we are pretty much you know, doing as, as a population, mm -hmm. as a continent. Um, you know, there was a conversation that um, as much as Africa can produce, you know, um, so much solar, you know, uh, we need to be able to engage in that. Um, the financing that goes into that sector, we only get about, I think, 2% of it mm -hmm. compared to the rest of the world who actually don't have much to give compared to us in terms of solar energy. Mm. So there's um, almost an imbalance when it comes to financing in that uh, climate financing. And um, we need much of that for us to be able to help the rest of the world to be able to meet the mm. offsetting that they do, okay. or rather that is needed. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, you, you okay. have, you all have. Right, all right. Uh, speaking about climate financing, you've just talked about that. I understand that um, you know, the developed countries had pledged, I think, a hundred billion. It was. You know, mm -hmm. how, you know, but when you, you said earlier on that mm -hmm. we have not really been receiving this, have they yes. kept to their word what needs to be done? Is mm -hmm. this, w will this form part of the conversation at mm -hmm. COP28 in Dubai? Yes, definitely it will. Because uh, COP28 is all about stock taking. Mm -hmm. What, where do we miss the mark? Where are the gaps? Where are the loopholes? What didn't we do? What do we need to do? When they are committing that 100 billion, what happens is there's no pinpointing who's going to give it to who. Uh -huh. You see, some, some, some stuff were, were pretty much undefined. Mm -hmm. And that brought a whole issue, you know, in terms of controversies and all. Uh, but now it's an issue of after the Africa Climate Summit, we know what we want. We know how we need the financing of it to be structured in such a way it's fair play. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the game, it's not. Because as, as I mentioned, if you look at carbon credit, for example, mm. in the Western world, you are looking at a price of $200 plus. You look at Africa, we are looking at an average of $8 for that. So question is why? And we are the ones who are actually uh, helping you to offset. Mm -hmm. So why are we getting the less portion of it? And yet we are the ones who are actually suffering because of the industrialization that's taking outside our continent. Mm -hmm. So um, the restructuring is, is key. There's no question about it. It was mentioned in the Africa Climate Summit. There was a consensus about it. That's mm. why there was the Nairobi Declaration about it. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's uh, pretty much has to be talked about, and I'm sure it will be well addressed. All right. Yes. Um, just before I come to you, Muzani, about the still on the finances, in what form does it come? Because... Um, does it come as a grant? Does it come mm. as a loan that we'll need to repay after some time? Just to make it clear for, for us to understand. Uh, the financing, it's going to be mixed. It's a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. mm, it's a mixed bag. Um, why is it a mixed bag? It's because uh, grants will come uh, to enable. Um, we are not all at the same level in terms of GDPs in every country. So mm -hmm. uh, some will come in terms of uh, you know, uh, credit. There's no question about it. Um, so the financial structure will take, some will come as loans, there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. So it will take, uh, it will be a mixed bag. Okay. Yeah, it will be, a, but uh, at the end of it, it will all amount to what needs to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, back to you, c coming to you, Muzani. Um, he has been talking, Felix has been talking about carbon credits. So for people that don't understand what carbon credit is, explain to us what it is. Uh, the carbon credit is the, the compensation Mm -hmm. that we get um, for the emissions that is caused by mostly uh, the global uh, the global global north mm -hmm. uh, community so once like it's calculated what i mean we given like the compensation that you get um uh, to finance mm -hmm. the activities that you're doing on the local levels mm -hmm. to reduce the 
impact of the climate crisis, mostly caused by the global north communities. Okay. Yes. So how, how do we get this compensation? Mm -hmm. Felix, you look like you want to say something. Oh, yeah, yeah. just to add to what mm -hmm. she said, uh, um, one carbon credit is 1,000 tons of CO2. Mm -hmm. 1,000 kilograms, that's, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what it is. So one ton of CO2 equals to what? One carbon credit. Mm -hmm. So how much you're able to sequester, that's another jargon, uh, which I might have to break <laughs> down. <laughs> uh -huh. But it's true, it's true. I mean, it's been, um, it's been mythical to many people. As I mentioned, uh, during the Africa Climate Summit, um, when people were being interviewed, 90% could not even mention one SDG out of 17. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so uh, all these jargons need to be broken down. Much more advocacy needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so that's what a carbon credit is. It's an issue of, okay, how much s CO2 have I taken from the air, put it back down in the soil? Mm -hmm. How much CO2 have I um, prevented for being produced, you, especially in the fashion industry? Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. Okay. Yes. And I know that people are getting into carbon credits as a as a means, I don't know, t of making money because it can be. So if myself, I decide to plant trees and then I, okay, I, I don't know the math around it very well, okay. but I decide to plant trees, then I get some money out of it from a company. Is that, is how that it how works. it goes? Um, okay, that's also another myth that mm. needs to be broken <laughs> down. <laughs> that's a myth, okay. The reason I say so, uh -huh. it's because you need a forest of trees mm -hmm. over a period of time to be able to sequester enough for you to at least acquire enough carbon credit that mm -hmm. you can be able to trade in the market. Okay. So uh, take a, an acre of trees at least, an acre of trees, mm -hmm. uh, give it at least five years, maybe three years, and then now at least after um, all measurements have been done, uh, then at least you can have something um, to kind of that's good enough mm -hmm. uh, to be able to be considered for such a market. Okay. So it's more than just one tree. Um, it's a forest. I, it's exactly, that's the point of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's, it's over time. It's not like I plan today and then uh, give me my money tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, you, you, it takes time. Okay. It takes time. Right. Uh, so because... At the end of the day, it's, it's behavior based also. That's what you need to understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, everything about the carbon credit and the carbon market, it's behavior. Okay. Yeah, based. All right. Yes. Back to you, Mazani. Um, some of the things that we are seeing in Kenya, apart from now th there's the initiatives that you've mentioned, but uh, also companies coming, I think private companies, and uh, the um, electric cars, how much, how much do you think you have done as a country to uh, participate in this? We've done relatively good, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot we need to do. Sure. Yeah. What, what area do you think we can improve on better? Well, we can improve on financing, that's one. Mm -hmm. And also, I still insist on representation matters. Because okay. we're we not able to understand everything. We cannot everyone is not represented. And I'm saying this because <laughs> if I'm given a chance to speak again, mm. I'll just speak a whole hour about art. Mm. Yeah, art. yeah, I'm an artist, I'm an activist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Activist. Yeah, if you look at the art sector, and if it we are adequately represented in these policy and programs making tables, then we're going to give a whole impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True mm. it. So okay. to me, True. it's about representation, because mm. we're, we're going a lot, uh, through mm. a lot, we're mm. doing a lot, yes. and we are still not doing a lot. Mm -hmm. So For we sure. can only know if we mm -hmm. include everyone. Yes. Even you could include an artist, even include kids, mm -hmm. even include, you know, intergenerational di dialogue. If you mm -hmm. have it, mm -hmm. then you have everything that we need, because, yes. and also um, the government and the, yeah, the government is doing well. Yes. So we should not be, like, fighting the government. Mm -hmm. We need to, to, uh, we to like, be in the advocacy space mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the mind and attitude of providing mm -hmm. solutions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we talk about companies, that, that we have uh, so many thematic areas that we, mm -hmm. we can cover. So if you mm -hmm. talk about electric vehicles, mm -hmm. that is one. That is energy. Mm -hmm. So it's doing well on energy. Okay. Yes. But yes. what about finance? Mm -hmm. What about inclusivity? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and other like innovation and technology. Yes. So we should look at uh, everything. All like we have okay. all the mm -hmm. avenues mm -hmm. to explore. So yes. if we are able to explore sure. all the avenues, then we are able mm -hmm. to have all the answers. Sure. But if you look at electric, because that's just mm -hmm. one. Yes. Uh, but we're doing well, but again, mm -hmm. we need to explore all the there avenues. Yeah, that's the point. That we, yeah. know, we have 
totally not done anything on yeah around, sure right? inclusivity <laughs> okay oh, so inclusivity <laughs> come, come yeah. back to that again yeah. okay what have you ever what impact mm -hmm. have you been able to do in your own capacity with your team and mm -hmm. you know the different things that that you're doing yeah um in art so i'm the creative that UNSDG scanners contact mm -hmm. so um we've done a lot of impact in information Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in giving information to the public through art. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a guitarist, so I've been going to the streets, you know, singing in the clubs, mm -hmm. and also yeah. like what I do in my small ways with my kids, so they're able to learn as they grow, and they're able to create more impact because they'll have more knowledge about it mm -hmm. when they're growing. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we're just happy enough because at, at least for the first time in the COP28, we're having arts and entertainment pavilion in the blue zone, yes. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we're having a COP28 uh, report on the artists and we're going to release it in a music form. So it's we feel like we're being included. Mm -hmm. Like there's uh, already a movement in the yes. UN mm -hmm. that has uh, arts and art and culture mm -hmm. um, growing mm -hmm. but still if you look at it there are no artists they're not uh, they're no artists in it like there are no artists in the room giving inputs to programs and policies mm -hmm. so we want to be represented like just like it doesn't it's not appropriate to s to have a whole panel of mm -hmm. adults speaking about youth people exactly. i mean youth yeah young people mm -hmm. is the same way that it is not appropriate to have mm -hmm non-performing artists mm -hmm. speaking about the artists Art. mm -hmm. we need to start looking at artists as intergenerational mm -hmm. professional and stakeholders mm -hmm. diverse stakeholders mm -hmm. who can and need to speak for themselves okay yeah but at least now there's a step you have a yeah. platform that you've yeah, been sure. given that cop sure. 28 sure okay very interesting mm -hmm. and for the youths that are wondering how do they um get involved in this conversation how do they know who's representing them at cop 28 who are usually there who who goes on behalf of you know wanjiko the common yes. one ain't there yeah any of you can answer on that she can tell you mm -hmm. for her to qualify to cop 28 it was competitive i think she was top 20 out of a hundred thousand applications over, over ten thousand wow. across the globe applications yeah. uh -huh. and so i topped it and she topped, topped it Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Yes, you. so Quite we have different organizations huh, uh -huh. who will send the youth. We have uh, the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance, right? Sure. Mm. Who have been doing a lot of work, especially with the university students. Um, there's the UKYCC, I sure. think it's called, mm. right? Yeah, who are part of Greenpeace. So there are different initiatives sending youth. Mm -hmm. So I in fact, we even have the, um, which was, it was good for me to see, um, the Anglican Church. Mm -hmm. They do have representatives. And this was impressive for me to see because um, many a times it's not like you see the church, you know, in that space. That's, yeah. And so actually this year mm -hmm. is the first year that Pope Francis, a Pope is going to be part of Because it's critical. Mm -hmm. It's critical. He's a force by himself. So that stamp of approval on that, it's going to bring a lot of buy-in into it mm -hmm. because we have a lot of uh, Catholic, you know, uh, members mm. so it's it's critical for him to do that especially because of how much power he has and influence and uh, it's as, as you said it's a climate crisis it is a crisis it's it's more like an emergency mm. as in if we don't do anything now we are looking at our own disaster what you're trying to fight for is humanity to continue existing on earth that's what you're fighting for it's as simple as that mm -hmm. and we are at the end of it if we, if we don't do things right, uh, we are looking at more disasters. You saw the flooding that's taking place. Yeah. You saw the lives lost. Um, in fact, this is an after effect. It is an after effect. Of climate change. Exactly. Mm. And, and then, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, our soil is degraded. So by, and I mentioned 90% by 2060 is going to be degraded if you still keep farming the same way. Mm -hmm. So it's a crisis, which means we lack food. So, um, much needs to be done. The fashion industry, you see so many clothes being thrown out, plastics being thrown out. So um, it's a crisis that needs to be addressed. Other than that, uh, humanity is looking at its own end. So instead of looking at my end, why can't I fight for survival? That's what we're doing mm -hmm. at the moment. Okay. It's that bad. It's, it's crazy. I mean yes. We need to do something <laughs> about it. Literally. And now yes. as we wrap up on this conversation, I want you both to say something, um, your final you know say on this to to the youth that is watching the youth that are watching um but before that you know do we have after cop 28 do we have um you know uh, those that are in the government those that 
make policies mm -hmm. do do we have them there and will they be accountable to us from mm -hmm. you know to give us a report tell us this and this is what we're going mm -hmm. to to see this is what we needs to be done this is what was agreed on mm -hmm. yes so let me ask you Madani. yeah um, the reports are done by v different groups, mm -hmm. depending on uh, those who represent. We are represented by the government. We, yeah. we have re represented for the youths, from the artists. So everyone ha is accountable mm -hmm. to giving reports. True. True. Okay. Yeah. So we will see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something good. Give us your uh, parting shot to this to the youth who's watching right now, mm -hmm. and if you want to speak directly to the camera, that's your camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, uh, expect adequate representation from Creation 2030 UNSDGs, and w w through our work and the, through our artist delegation, we are looking and we are aiming to uh, put the artist as the integral component of COP28. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Where can people find you on yeah. social media or your organization? Yeah, my social media, uh, personal social media on Facebook is Mudoni Trufena. On TikTok, Mudoni underscore Trufena. I do creative mm. work on environment. And on Instagram, Mudoni underscore Trufena. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Mudoni. We appreciate your insights to this conversation. Yeah. And to you, Felix. My parting shot is there's money to be made. There's no question about it in green mm. jobs. Mm -hmm. Get technical skills uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we need people who can be able to take ion batteries, convert them into something else. Because right now, almost every house or rather every person goes through three phones in a year. And uh, what happens is at the end of it, when you dispose it, that's another hazard to the environment we are creating. But if you can find a way to be able to recycle that, uh, you can find a way to be able to... We have the WE Center. The WE Center, they can give you the skills to be able to... Uh, find uh, mm -hmm. how you can be able to make money out of it by collecting them and also being able to dispose through them. If it's the job, you can work as an extension service officer to be able to help the farmers practice what we call regenerative agriculture. That's another job on, on its own. So there are many, many green jobs that even though it's a crisis, a crisis only brings a solution. So it's up to you to be able to sit back and ask yourself, whatever skill you have, how does it apply to this next economy that we have? And um, we have technical colleges, TVET, um, and also if you want to get more information on the same, as I mentioned, some people are using plastic to build houses, uh, just reach out to me at felix.kimani at esrag.org, then mm -hmm. we'll be able to converse more on the same. Okay, wonderful. I love that, that there's opportunities in the green sector. Whatever you are skilled at, you can divert it on this side. And yes. with crisis comes yeah. opportunities, opportunities, solutions. Too. Amazing. Yes. Thank you guys for coming on board and sharing your insights on this. That has been Felix Karaoke, who's the program leader, Rotary International Corp 28, and Muzoni Trufena, the founder of Mazingara Saturday's Nation. I hope you've taken something from this conversation. Something has been made clearer to you about the climate conversation. Um, we're going to take a short break and then Brian Sakwa will be coming next with the conversation. Stick with us.